Prime Time Edition of Next Legacy Radio. I am Brandon here, and I'm glad all you listeners out there who has been supportive and appreciate the, the, the legacy music of one Melba Moore's. Everybody waiting online, everybody's anticipating hearing this young lady's voice, so I'm going to go ahead and put a mic on her in a second. But let, let me say something real quick about this song that we just played, which is available. People can go get it on iTunes, go find it and support and purchase this, this single by this uh, beautiful, talented Tony Award winner, four-time Grammy nominee. Um, you know, she she's the superhero of superheroes when it comes to not just her profession, but just the way she lives her life and takes care of business the way she knows how. So when I first heard this and saw the video, um, I just I didn't think personally I could fall in love anymore with Melba Moore and her musical talents than, than I already did because, you know, she has done so much in her career uh, from her collaborations and her accomplishments as a solo artist, of course, and the music that she has given us time in and time out. And, you know, here's this song and, I'm listening to it and I'm like, wow, and I'm, you know, still floored by not just the talents that she had, but just the passion that she brings forth. And to me, I hope all you aspiring young musicians out there could really take some notes, watch the video, listen to her harmonize and listen to her sing and and appreciate exactly what we have and when we have it and, and how it's put forth. And I, I just think that people need to give um, a lot of credit and credit that goes to the, the, this talented lady. And, and she is she is a byproduct of a legacy that she has created. And, of course, you can reach her on Twitter at Melbourne Moore number one, brought to you by com. And without further ado, I'll bring my queen, Miss Melbourne Moore, live on Next Legacy Radio. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, Happy New Year, and what a, a welcome, what an introduction. You make me so pleased and grateful to be in this industry. Thank you so much for inviting me. Melba, I'm telling you, I feel like I haven't did enough. So, you know, outside <laughs> of doing interviews, uh, shine your shoes, wash your car, whatever I can do to be able to help bring something to the table to uh, show you more appreciation, I'll do it. I'll definitely do it. Well, I, I think you can't do anything until I continue to bring you more stuff, and I'm going to do that. Well, you know what? You've you've gotten us off to a right start in 2015 with your first single, <laughs> yeah. With uh, you Thank know, you. which is yeah. coming from an album titled Forevermore that's coming in in this year as well. But let me let me let me ask you about the single, and because when I listen, because to me I'm 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 big as far as listening. I don't just hear it; I pay attention to the lyrics. You know, of course, everybody wants something with a snappy beat and all that good stuff. But right. I pay right. close <laughs> attention to the lyrics that you. Have, have sung with this particular single and you know when when this was put together and I know it was produced by Dominic McFadden um right when 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 this was put out like to me th- this will stir my soul based on everything that you were singing about is what we need in this not just this entertainment business but in this world today so when you put this song together um and you finished it how how did it feel overall to you as far as just the overall vibe just what you're saying. My my only hope was, and you can only hope, you don't have a crystal ball and you have no guarantees, is that especially people like you who are going to introduce it to the audiences will feel that and have that um that that passion about it, that energy, that freshness. That this is, you know, we are alive. Let's let's live. Let's love. Let's remind each each other of why God put us here. That, that's important. Mm-hmm. And um, that's that's the um, effect everybody that's, you know, charted the record and exposed it to people have had. So, I mean, the first people you have to impress are those that are going to help you promote it and sell it. And that's right. what they pick up about it. Of course, I want them to see that my voice is in good shape, that I've kept myself in good good health and good shape. But um, then it has to be it has to be a hit <laughs> on all those different <laughs> levels. <laughs> You know, I, I I watched the video and I'm like, you know, my 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 girl Melba still got it. Seeing you know with the whole double dutch and you know seeing you get in there and get busy and handle your thing and I, I you know just you know just a lot of nostalgia and, and just the way that the song was sung and just everything. I mean, I'm pretty sure it resonates to a lot of people who uh, appreciates what music means and and the fact that not only music matter but also how we treat each other in society matters. And I think it's one of those songs where 
it's not only going to stand the test of time, people are going to appreciate it because of exactly the the social climate it's it's reaching and and it's relatable people can dance to it but also get the message right well one one thing that you said that's very important it's not easy to do that and have it still register nostalgia because you can't drag people into the past we live now you know and we're looking to the future so that is what i think is an important part of it too to connect with who I am now, what I represent, and, you know, the legacy that I bring forth. But it, it has to be relevant to whoever's living now, whatever their race or culture or age is. So that's important. So here we are in 2015, and it's a new era of music, the way it's being done, the way it's being marketed, the way it's being told and sold on a on a, on a regular basis. And, and here you are, and, and, and of course, you know, reaching back to the past, I mean, a, a, a lot of lessons that we learn and in the, in the good music that we heard comes from that. So you being the Tony Award winner and four-time Grammy nominee and, and, and the person that has uh, accomplished so much in this business, when you look at the industry now and you're, you're marketing new product now, so it's a different deal than when it was back in the 70s, 80s, 90s or whatnot, how, how is your approach, or how do you feel about just the um, the changes that has taken place since then? Well, I've been changing because um, you have to to stay alive and stay vital and stay healthy and whole and um, what is that intact, you know, as well as as re- relevant. Mm-hmm. And what um, I see happening is is that um, just like every new year, you have to look at what's um, built this up to where you are and where are you now and what can you? I, I still feel like I I got to keep stepping out of my comfort zone, and um, right. into but into a new comfort zone. In other words, you have to continue to um, refurbish and maintain your stamina, and mm-hmm. and you know the your vitality of your life. So you know, I, I, one of the things I literally do is get out and walk up a, a hill every morning. I want to breathe hard, and you know, and what that does, of course, it. For the moment, you're not quite so comfortable, but it's not so hard until you you hurt yourself. But by the time you get up the hill, Mm. you know you don't accomplish something today, not 30 Mm -hmm. years ago only. Mm -hmm. So what happens is if you keep yourself fresh and vibrant for whatever God is bringing you that day, then people look at you and say, oh, wait a minute, she's not brand new if they don't know you. What did she do? Then that makes what you did before a living legacy, then it's important. I, I, well, it's, you remind people in a, in a nice way that you've done something, you've accomplished something, you've built up right. to this, and now, okay, now it's to, well, what are we going to do today? And what we're going to do today is not only maintain what, we, what we've done and remind yourself and other people of that, but we're going to kind of shed away something, whatever it is. You know, like maybe I ate too much ice cream yesterday or something. Okay, well, I'm going to work that off today and let mm-hmm. the um, endorphins kind of kick in and make me feel good about what's now and – whatever the the hormones do to build new cells for today so that uh, when you get up that hill, you have a fresh supply of whatever you need for today. Mm. Mm. And and I, I couldn't have put it in, in better context as far as just, I mean, not just how life is, because you, you, you brought the element of um, not just staying in shape physically, but also uh, I'm pretty sure I can say mental approach to it as well, because in a lot of cases, too, physically, like you said, you can run up that hill, but it's also uh, taxing mentally as well because you start thinking that, right. you know what, I can do it, I can do it, and then once you do it, you know, that mental that, that mental uh, relaxation kind of tends to happen once you accomplish certain things. And, and, and to me, isn't that the importance, though, of a, of a lasting legacy? Like, to me, I think anything yes. that you do, not just vocally, but also yes. what you do to yourself, for yourself, for others, that yes, is because, important as far as what, what makes you last as long as you've lasted, correct? Yes, because what happens is um, you kind of refresh or recre- recreate or yeah, yeah, yourself every day because parts mm-hmm. of you die, and you have that's part of the process, but something else is made alive. And then what part of it, too, is that when you first start going up the hill, um, well, it looks wonderful. It's oh, that looks good. It's a beautiful day. Then you start to go up, and you say, "Wait a minute, can, can I?" Can I? <laughs> and you have to figure out in your mind and your whole being 
okay, how do I do this? And take it one step at a time and watch this process um, reveal itself to you as you as you move you know, right. up to, to accomplish it. Because I skip from one part to, okay, now we're up the hill. Isn't that wonderful? But you got to go through the process. <laughs> <laughs> and you can handle it. And, 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 and it could be done if if you really put forth an effort. And, you know, and you, you keep, talk, you and keep you know, talking I'm about walking up. I'm not talking about just me. This is, this is like oh, of course. Keep, what everybody has to do and whatever they're doing. Yeah. Of course, and you and you, you you keep talking about walking up that hill. So you know I have to make sure that I give you a, a huge shout out for not just looking as gorgeous as you do, but just your 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 workout, your health and fitness drive as far as what you're trying to do for yourself. And and not only that, of course, I mean you know we're gonna talk about the new album, of course, but also you 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 teach master's classes at colleges and universities and singing and acting as well. So for all that you do, Melba, and and, and trust me. As a guy who I pride myself on trying to be exactly like that as far as a hard worker yeah. and all that good stuff, I'm still taking yeah. notes when I ask this question. So when I ask this question, I, I got a pen and piece of paper. I'm, I'm ready to write <laughs> down your answers to this question. How do you how do you maintain that level of passion for doing all the things that you're doing right now? Singing, you're, you're teaching classes, you're, you're, you're heavy into workouts. So... What gives you the drive and the passion to do what you're doing with all the things that you have done and continue to do? Well, in a word, um, Jesus, and I won't get religious on you, but um, that's really my my job, my vocation. So when I go up this hill, then um, I have to go across another hill, and then I get you know some transportation to Manhattan, then I, I take the subway, and then I walk up all these different steps to get to church to hear what is God saying for today. I do this every day, mm-hmm. so... Mm-hmm. So, um, I, so I'm, I'm, if if you want to be passionate or fanatical about something, I think it has to be God. Then you know, that starts the day. It, it rules the day, and He may just have you know one little scripture or something, one little small passage. Usually, it's something that you know you can focus on, and you and you can, uh, yeah, focus on so that that covers the day. And then it weeds out a lot of things that you might waste your time or get scattered on. Not to say that that isn't a challenge sometimes, but over a period of time, I weeded out a lot of things that, um, okay, I really only got one basic thing to do. And you would go and hear what God is saying. I mean, you know, you could sit right. and pray and you could, but if you take the, uh, make the effort to get up and go because he's God and you're not, then I think you have his passion and you have his compassion and, um, mm-hmm. you, whatever you're working at, um, um, I don't know quite how to say it, but um, that's the focus. Doesn't it? Doesn't it resonate too? As far as, of course, you have to have that passion, and you have to be one hundred and ten percent committed to not just listening, but hear his. You know, uh, you know. Of course, people out there well, listening, it's Sunday, so I don't really care if we get religious key. on people tonight. So it's it's. <laughs> It's okay but for us to say what we're going to say. You, so, you know, we got to give yeah. in to that and stay committed. It, it's it's one of those things, Melba, right, yeah. where, yeah. you know, as yeah. as a man or a woman or, or a child or yeah. whoever yeah. who, who yeah. really is deeply involved with wanting to do and be a part of self-growth, you got to have that spiritual connection to not, not only what you want out of life but what is given to you and what he gives you at the end mm-hmm. of it all. And, and I think you yeah. have to you have to stay committed and you have to yeah. put in that effort every single day you get up you get up and get ready to do yeah. your day right and you said something at the beginning of our conversation you said i i don't just hear you i listen mm-hmm. and so um i would i wouldn't say that that's just something you automatically do i think that's something you study and you work at and and you you determine you promise yourself you're going to consecrate you're going to commit yourself i don't think you can just have the have the passion i think if you will commit and try every day just a little bit, especially at the start of your day, then you'll find that there is a passion that that grows out of that. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. The beautiful, talented Melbourne Moore is our guest on Next Legacy Radio, and 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 tell me a little bit about Forevermore that's coming out this year. Um, we're going to talk about the second single shortly, and we're going to play it a little later after uh, you know we're we're done with our interview. But tell the listeners a little bit about just how this album have have not just come to be, but also what you're expecting, not just from the album, but from your, your loyal fans to, to receive it. 
All right. Well, it's been a real growth process, and I, well, one of the things I realize is that when we start whatever our vocations are, we bring our whole life to it, and we study it, and then we have kind of a, a stockpile of of living experiences to bring to whatever it is. And so I've had to take some time out once again and just, you know, start my life over and see, okay, who am I today and um, what's happened and um, where is everybody today and see can you bring that. So for, I'm saying that for, for for the purpose of saying I don't bury myself in show business or music. I'm trying to find out mm-hmm. what's going on in life as well so that you have some some life force to bring to whatever your music is at, at this time and then – realize that, um, well, other people are other places. Can you tap into them and see what they're doing? One of the great ways of doing that, of course, is the social media, which has taken over right. our lives. But since we've all had to do it, you know, um, it's been a process of learning now that I'm you know, not under a big umbrella of any corporation. I'm the corporation to remember back what I learned when I was with the big uh, record labels and the and the big marketing companies and mm-hmm. um, translate that into small business and do that myself, be the head of my own company and um, um, collaborate with other people that helped me to do this. It's a big, like, I think, uh, independent small business world right now where you can reach tons and tons of people because everybody is, a, is an independent company or an independent business. I love Absolutely. that about it. Have, and have, so, have this have this Melba actually, you know, in, in, in a lot of ways back in the day um, when the record labels really meant something, I guess artists in a lot of ways use it as a, not necessarily a crutch, but anything that you really wanted to depend on, your record label had it as far as marketing, promotion, this, that, and the other. This is more giving you a creative approach where you can be able to do it as you see right. fit as opposed to right. asking somebody uh, for directions. You can actually path, you can create right. that own path and that own lane yourself, right? Well, that's a beautiful way to say it, but if you're wrong, then you, you're the one that can't pay your rent and there's nobody to blame. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, so very true. It, it's <laughs> courageous, but I, I think it's good. I mean, if if you belong here, and we do, then you find ways of, of uh, well, here's where the passion comes, too, because when you don't know things and you have to learn and you want to learn, um, when things become really critical, you sit down and you're serious and you're committed and you find the solutions and you take them one mm-hmm. by one because you know you have to. I mean, of course, and you want to. <laughs> Indeed, indeed, and 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 of course, you know, you want to make sure you have your uh your your strong team around you that's not uh filled with a bunch of yes people and and people that's going to help right. uh you know mold and shape how things are going to go as well because you know of course I mean we all know in this in this day and age we're not all the way right you know we're not a hundred percent right all always but you know it's good to be able to have your team that that's going to stand behind you to be able to help you know okay let me help you tie your shoe. Or let me help you uh, right. steer in another direction, or something like that, just so you can be able to, you know, have that balance because we all need that in our and lives, right? right? And, and say like, okay, Miss Moore, get rid of your flip phone and get an iPhone, please. I mean, ah. I love you, but uh, uh, <laughs> I love you, but uh, you know, you really need to do this or that or the other. And you know, uh, for a person like myself, I, in in the past, I was shy, and other people did a lot of things for me. So sometimes, mm-hmm. I, you know, I have to kind of practice and build up being assertive and, and, and aggressive in, in areas that, that I need growth in. And so my my um, helpers have to be sweet and say, "Yes, you're doing really well, but did you remember you, your 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 shoes do have laces and they're not tied? You know, amen. They have to help you amen. lovingly, <laughs> like you said. Though, no, no, but were you really here. shy? Were were you really shy? Oh yes, yeah. shut, totally shut down. Because my early uh, family life was just totally broken and abusive. My mother was a professional singer who was away all the time. She was a mm-hmm. single parent, so I I, w- I was raised by um, what's what's that um, what's that um, oh god what's the movie with the with the the, uh, the heavy set beautiful you know black girl was so abused. Do you remember the picture? Oh god, I I know I know who you're talking you about. You know what I'm talking about. It's my mind, absolutely. Okay, but that's how I was raised, to give you a quick okay. picture. Okay. So uh, by the time my mother married my wonderful stepfather, um, I was just really shut down. So um, uh, And then to, to move and start all over again was a tremendous culture shock, but it was it was great for me. So th- from there, I got a good education, but I had to learn to communicate with the, with my own family first as 
fortunately, my stepfather is and was a musician, so we all got involved with studying music, which is a great, mm-hmm. great, great, great healer and help. And then when we discovered I could sing, the I guess the impetus to be well was that I just loved singing, and although I was scared to death, it was a reason for me to to work at getting over being afraid of people and afraid of life. So, so was that's it all was it music? With. Was it music, Melba, that uh, that that made you kind of slowly break out of the shyness, or what? What what yeah. hit you to the point where you know what? I'm, I'm you know I I can I can laugh and joke around, and I don't really care what anybody thinks about me. Well, I'm only there now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully well now. I heard that. But you know, um, I I remember the first times it started to hit me was when I was on the stage performing in the Broadway musical Pearly because it's a it's a comedy, it's a joyful uh character, it's it's a comedic character and uh it was there that I discovered that I'm really a good comedian and um uh, and since she was a character, um I would practice and, and no, I, I would rehearse being funny and joyful, and, and then I, it was a long run, so I could observe the audience and observe myself in this process. So, mm-hmm. oh my God, you can practice, you can you can be happy. And I saw the audience out there after a while, you know, for doing it for so long, you're not really scared anymore. Right. I thought, oh my God, what are they looking at? <laughs> They're looking at you, fool. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized from observing the character, what they were observing was the character Ludie Bell was coming out in um, a joyful, friendly, human way, and that's what you, I saw in their faces. And I said, oh, I wonder what they see on my face and other times. And then I would see how people respond to me, like on the street or whatever. And I began to consciously try to uh, work at catching myself being sad or being shut down or being solemn and see what I could do to change it. One of the things I did was I took dance classes. Now they call mm-hmm. it endorphins, but what I would realize is that every time I would take a dance class, when I come out, I was just happy. And I would notice that yeah. it wasn't just my imagination, because even strangers would um, they, they would resp- respond. If I didn't say anything to them. They would respond to me differently. I remember, mm-hmm. I remember this one particular time I was walking through the park, and this young man, and he wasn't flirting or anything. He said, oh, my goodness, you make the sunshine. That's how much of a difference it made. Mm. Did, so did he later ask you for, for your number? He later asked you for your number. No, he really, right? he really wasn't <laughs> flirting. <laughs> but it, it was a process that was quite amazing to me to discover, first of all, that I had been depressed all my life. I didn't know. That's what right. I, didn't, I didn't think anything about it because nobody ever talked about it until mm-hmm. I realized that uh, on the stage, because it was a character and you had to um, keep her the way she was, you couldn't you know, um, change her too much, right. playing a role, that you could actually do this. You could choose to do this and play a character. Even if it wasn't true, you could pretend for a while, and that was a lot of fun, and seeing right. that, oh, my goodness. And then you start to examine, you know, what your thoughts are. In the beginning, you just think things. Then you begin mm-hmm. to think what your thoughts are, and then you realize, oh, I don't have to think that. <laughs> I could think something happy. Ooh. Hmm, I think I like life. Wait a minute here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, 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 I remember think, that too, being the first awareness that that um, I didn't have to be shut down like that. Right. I think too, Melba, with uh, you know, with me personally, uh, you know, just a quick one on me. Just you know, I, I, as a, as a kid, I was I was real shy. I used to just hover around my mom. Even when we went to family functions, I would just stay on her leg like I didn't I didn't leave mm-hmm. at all and then I, I as I as I got older I, I I became not just a little bit more confident in my in myself but you know my my opinion other people's opinions just really didn't matter to me it it just really <laughs> you know I can I can you know be a little comedian or or just you know just be myself and be free and didn't care what other people thought and I I kind of grew up that way too as I got older and that's what I'm trying to teach my daughter too is be yourself like you know you don't have to be put on stage to you know for other people to judge you just judge yourself and be happy 
doing what you're it doing. It helps so I think much if important. you get that support from your family in the beginning. And, you know, because you might be just naturally shy. There's nothing wrong with it. We all have different personalities. But whatever your personality yep. is, it helps so much if the adults around you support you and pay attention to your personality and help you just be yourself. It helps so much. Amen to that. Melba Moore is our guest. You can follow her on Twitter at Melba Moore with the number one. You can go to MelbaMoore.com. She has her single, I'm telling you, Just Dance, is available on iTunes. You can pick it up right now. You you don't mind taking a couple calls? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. All right, let's do it. If you want to call in and talk to Melba Moore now, it's the time to do it before she uh, fades away, not permanently, <laughs> but, you know, when when the interview's over. So now it's time to take <laughs> take charge and be <laughs> that person to do it. Call in 949 Nine one two. Press the number one button and be her like Denia did. She's calling from Chicago. Denia, what's up? You're on the line with Melba Moore. Hi. Good evening. Good evening, Ms. Melba Moore. Good evening. Hi. Welcome. I'm Brandon. How are you? Great. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love the new single. Oh yeah. I was like, what? I was like, oh my goodness, the video, yeah, the video is dope. Yeah, the way that you have, you know, you have all these generations coming together and just, yeah. you know, having a good time. That's the kind of music we need <laughs> right now, for real, that it really is about, you know, having that energy and saying that music is, is inspiring and all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, and yeah. I was just listening to the, the version you did of Every Voice in the Sing today, and my goodness, I had almost forgotten. I was like, wow, it's so powerful because it's such an amazing song, but the way that you brought it together and collaborated just made it, so much more inspirational. I'm glad you heard it. Yeah. I, w- I want to see if we can get it re-released so that some other people can do their own versions of it. The reason I did it in the first place is I, being brought up in New York City, we didn't get black history. I didn't know we had a song that, that identified us that way. Wow. And every nation has a song, and you should know these things. So now mm-hmm. I'm hoping that um, you know everything continues for me the way it is so I can kind of just throw it out there for other people to take it as, as ours, you know. And you know it's 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 not just for black people, but you know we're a part. Everybody's a part of a tribe, and we should have you know it's, it should be a total melting pot. <laughs> we should be able to taste the Absolutely. spices in the soup, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> should know something about our culture, you know. But. Yeah, yeah. But yeah I, I still get chills Thank listening you. to that. I was listening to it earlier today, and I still get chills. Like you know the the, I the kind of chills you that, have um, when you listen. It stirs yeah. the soul. That's that's a beautiful thing to 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 feel. And and I think true people, uh, not just artists, but you know, fans of music can listen to it and they feel a certain way and they get caught up in the emotions of the song. I think that that right. that that goes a long way. That's that's what the power of music does, though. Yeah, exactly. and I should say it's not, it's not just for African American people. And one of the reasons it sounds so beautiful is because it's BB Winans' wonderful arrangement. Mm. Right. He produced and arranged it, so uh, the music is very beautiful. So, you know, we invite everybody to participate in the things that we've contributed to the culture of, of um, America and the world. Oh, of course. I love all, all my collaborators of, of that song, but, you know, it was Melba Moore and Friends, so you know Melba Moore. Right. Had, you know, she, had a, she had a heavy <laughs> hand in that whole song being put in, put in together, too. So, you know, mm-hmm. we, we love the Winans' contributions and Stevie Wonder and Stephanie Mills and everybody else involved, but, you know, come on, it's Melba Moore and Friends for a reason. So, hey, all righty then. <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, not, I, not I, hang I tight with me. Let me let me take uh let me take the call from the four four three. It's a it's a it's a Baltimore one. I mean I guess the the biggest question is, you know, what can we do to inspire these younger singers to understand that music is supposed to inspire? <laughs> Well, I think whatever uh, way you have of speaking out and setting an example wherever you are, uh, of being a good citizen and you know telling your point of view, that's what you can do. It, it makes a difference, even each each individual person. You know, everybody's not going to be on the air, but you know, and, and call people uh, like you know whomever you know and encourage them to do the same thing. Who are you know, radio hosts and, and uh, on on media and, and and tell them what your opinions are because they're very positive and you know the audience is the boss. Mhm. Uh, mm, absolutely. Very true. Very true. Well, I think it's up to the parents to find ways. First of all, of, of being physically with them, um, they need that bonding, and the, the parents have to have uh, they have to have values. 
and that that will make the you know the the rough hours and the the, the tough times that that you go through uh, come out okay. It's not that that you have guarantees, but if it just um, one of the things I, f- I feel is that so many people, people in the industry, feel like show business um, is life. It isn't. It's one small portion. We still need to live. And very often what the tragedy is, when children are very talented and precocious and brilliant, they get pushed into a tunnel and they don't get to live. And then when they grow up and they go out and they see other things, they don't know how to handle it because we haven't taught them or we haven't been there with them to guide them through it. That's the main thing I see. It's not the business. It's, I mean, because, I, you know, you can't expect a record executive to teach your child's spirituality, especially. Right. I'm thinking of somebody in, in, in particular, uh, but uh, I'm not going to name no names. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I was at the funeral of a person who, um, you know, should have been, very well grounded as far as spirituality was concerned. Said, well, why didn't he do this? Why didn't? Then he he revealed at the funeral that he he was orphaned. Mm. Mm. So you're not gonna when you young parents and when their their children are precocious, they need help and guidance too. You need a support system of people maybe who have nothing to do with this industry, but have something to do with morals, value, um, the importance of truth, um, the knowledge of what it is to be a human being and their their need for guidance and fellowship. You know, children, you know, sometimes when they're precocious, they have no, um, no, no proper peer company to grow up with sometimes. Right. They're with adults all the time or with professionals all the time. Well, who's going to teach them what it is to be a boy or a girl or to be a sibling or to be... Um, a son or a daughter or a friend. You need those experiences. Mm. Game right there. Did, 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 I, did I help you along? The, the It began very early. And so many of them are tragedies. We can think that the industry is, is bad, but it's not. Uh, anything that God gives us, the devil can take it and taint it. But if nobody Absolutely. ever told you that, you, you have no protection. Amen. Amen to that. Let me take a, let me take a call from the three... One three area code. You are on the air on Next Legacy Radio with Miss Melba Moore. Who's this? Happy New Year, Melba Moore. Welcome. Happy New Year. Who are you? Tell us. <laughs> I'm Foxy. I know that's right, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Welcome. Foxy. I just wanted to say I have enjoyed you, Melba, from the time I have seen you perform on stage. And I really, even though it's Melba Moore and Friends, I knew that it was going to be as though you had just very first came out for the very first time. I love it. And anything that I can do to support you, I am so there. And I pray for you all the time. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You are welcome. Welcome aboard. (laughs) Amen. So that's all I have to say. And I just hope to see you and performing in the Starlights once again because my ticket will be purchased. Thank you. I'll be looking for you. you. All right. Okay. Appreciate the call. Thank you. And I got a I got a question. I got a couple more quick ones before we let you go. And Melba Moore is our guest on Next Legacy Radio and um earlier we, we of course we were we were talking and to me when you when you think about um, the entertainment business, Melba, and um, as of last year, and I and I ask this question to a lot of people, well, especially this past year, because it was a little different than the way it was promoted or marketed. But you only have one artist that had a platinum album by the name of Katy Perry. Um, everybody else was, you know, probably in you know upper to mid or you know lower or whatnot. But my question to you, Melba, is: Does record sales matter? to the longevity of an artist. And the reason why I ask that question is um there's there's a debate you're only as good as the number of albums you were sold that has been sold. And I particularly don't believe that. As you know, you know, I'm I'm a guy that's a fan of music and I don't really believe you're only as good as the record sales that you are as an artist. I I think longevity has to do with the good quality music that you put out. Hopefully the record sales will come but if they don't come as hot and heavy as you would want, but I think putting a good quality record out is more important than how many actual 
albums is sold, correct? Uh, I I agree with you. Um, I would say, uh, especially since the industry's changed, since uh, we don't have the the great um, power that the few record companies that were there, they rule the entire entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. Since they were, you know, in the record business, uh, then then if you didn't sell records, you couldn't be in the business, you know. <laughs> right. But Very I don't true. think it's it's true these days, and because we've had to rediscover ourselves, re redefine really business and and life. Um, there's much more diversity in terms of how you can make a living, and um, I think record sales will always count sales of anything mean you know you make a living and it also means that people um uh, supported your your business or your career so that's important Absolutely. but i think you have a variety of way of touching people and making a living uh in addition to records records if sales. you had a I mean, if you had a million people who just went and purchased a single just dance which we would love that. And actually, people out there that's listening, if you're over a million right now, listeners, go just go get it. If you got it once, you can get it again. Go buy it twice. I did. You know, one for the house, one for the car. I'm just saying. People can yeah. go do that. Yeah. yeah. But, and, and, you know, if you had a million people that purchased it and only, you know, what, would you rather take a million sales versus 400,000 of, of quality listens, meaning that people took – Everything that you embody in the creation of that of that song to uh, to show the appreciation of what you did. Would you take a million sales, or would you take the four hundred thousand quality listens? You know, I think you ask a complicated question. You want a simple answer? And <laughs> <laughs> Technically, no, no. You 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 can you can give me the Melba Moore answer to the question because I think I kind of know where you're going, but I, okay. I want to hear your answer yeah. to that question. All right. Well, it, it seems to me that if a million people actually plunked down and bought it, mm-hmm. uh, and especially what I feel it, it would be the reason why they would want it, they would think it was quality, and um, it would mean that I have a market base in, in which I could, you know, come and perform and teach and do a b- variety of things, so that we could build a relationship. So it, it has it has an importance. But like you said, if it, if they just listened. And but then I would want them to respond in some way, so that I would know who they were and, and that I could you know build that. I want to build a relationship, and then I want them to come and spend a little bit of money so I can pay my rent. There you go. They. <laughs> right. I, I hear but you. Amen I, I to that. With you. I just, it's not all on money. It's not all on records. No. Because a lot of what you can do, you can you can correlate what you do with your sales based on your um, your actual uh, tour dates and That's and right. one thing I did mention, which I definitely want to make sure I, that I show you a ton of love with, is you also perform your stage plays about your life called "I'm Still Standing." So I mean, you yes. have stage, you have teaching, you have your fitness, right. and, and and I'm I'm still waiting, right. Miss Moore, on an actual. Uh, fitness CD or DVD that people can actually check you out going up the hill it's coming. and stuff like that. I'll buy it. <laughs> it's coming. I'm just saying. I'm going to take my field crew tomorrow it. when I go to church. <laughs> See? See? We already got it started right there, y'all. MelbourneMore.com yeah. is a place where y'all can go find it when it's available. I'm just saying. But it's, 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 coming. it's and 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 you you can you can actually merge everything that you do into yeah. your um now yeah. in your your conglomerate your organization right. now, Melbourne Moore Enterprises to be able to generate as much as you can so right. you know you can take four hundred thousand sales easy and then you could turn right. it into you know a, right. a couple of million based on what you're doing outside of that also. Uh, that's what I've been doing for the last ten years or so. Um, reorganizing and seeing what are the priorities, and and so there are not too many cooks in the kitchen. And, you know, things are not mm-hmm. all confused. It's in decent order so that you can build things, and then they will generate other things from themselves. Yeah. See, we we all we all got it right there, locked in, locked and loaded. So right. Melbourne More Enterprises. Hey, I'm I'm a subscriber, so I'm not <laughs> just the person that buys the music. I'm trying to put stock into it as well. So, you know, it's all about support right here, people. So go to melbourneward.com. Make sure you pick up the single, yes. which is available, Just Dance. And also, let me talk, before I let you go, let me talk about the uh, second single that you have, and you have a video that you shot for it as oh, well. Yes. What Can I Do to Survive? 
tell tell the folks a little right. bit about that song? Well, I'm giggling because what I love is um, the last maybe ten years have been uh, spent in kind of just laying things out and doing them, getting the songs, getting the videos done, so that you actually have product. And then um, organizing it and getting a really great manager uh, and Ron Richardson and a couple of other people that are helping me to uh, um, establish myself, as you're saying, on Melbourne More Enterprises, mm-hmm. so that there is an actual entity where it's, it's all organized and laid out. And um, uh, what can I do to survive? Um, we just now did the video, but I, I was thinking, too, that uh, we did it earlier I don't know how long ago it's been now because nowadays you can put out a single and, you know, we were all kind of learning how the industry works. And so we had a a different distributor. Now we have a newer distributor and it's much better, so our marketing is much better. And so uh, uh, we built our our base in terms of who I am now. So we were able to get a fabulous film company company to actually do the video. And um, uh, everything is just kind of building up. So I really have a physical Enterprise. That's what I was giggling at. You mm-hmm. know, in a minute, you're gonna be able to, you, you know, I'll be able to sell some stock. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I like to hear. Indeed. I mean, I I think it's 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 deeper than just music. And I think if you touch as many people uh, as you have with the music talent that you do have and the contributions you made towards it, anything else that you do with all the passion that you had put into um into what you're doing you know people are going to support it because it's it's what you embed in and and what you do for yourself and you appreciate yourself and us as viewers and listeners and people that's supporting right. you we're going to do just that right support you unconditionally right. and i think it goes a long way i think people should take heed to that and 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 this is for all the people out there too melba that that's listening who is now trying to get to know you, like the younger generations as well. Right, that, yes. You know, even though yeah. Google is out there and you can YouTube a lot of stuff and do a lot of different things, there's a lot of people out there who, who is getting, you know, Melba Moore uncut. Right. As genuine as right. you are, and people should definitely go support it. And that's the one thing that I could take away, um, Melba, from, uh, you know, days of, uh, you know, futures past or whatnot, is the fact right. that, you know, Internet wasn't around back then, so we wouldn't be able right. to have this dialogue with millions and upon millions of different people in different countries. So it's a, it's a, it's a different avenue, and I'm grateful that we can be able to share this platform too. And I'm thinking too that through this process I've kind of um, weaned a lot of things out that were not as good a quality as, as I'm able to do now so that I'm, I can be, um, what can I say, more consistent about the quality that I'm, I'm able to put out in front of people so I, cause I, one of the things I wanted to do was as I get older and as I continue to be out here is to have something that's of interest to new generations coming along that's quality, that's relevant, that you know, cons- still considers to be what I like to say quote unquote show business, show business is fun, mm-hmm. it's exciting, it's it's relevant, it's, it's whatever's going on now, whoever you are so I'm more able to do that now I think and people definitely make sure you check out melbamore.com. Make sure you follow her on Twitter at melbamore with the number one. Um, Ms. Moore, I appreciate you kicking off 2015 with me. And and for the record, people, I, I just you know, hey, like I said, I'm I'm a human being, and you know, I, I go on where I go on your website and I check out your videos. And people out there, if y'all don't know, Melba is sexy. She is gorgeous. <laughs> I'm just I'm just Come letting y'all know that out there. I'm just <laughs> telling the truth. So All I can't right, I can't let you go without telling <laughs> telling the truth, Melba. You, you're <laughs> sexy. Good lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Happy belated birthday thank as well, because I know your birthday was in October, late October. So happy oh, thank belated. you very much. I really appreciate how you you put me to your audience. Thank you for sharing your audience as well. Thank you. I, I just I just hope we can be able to do it again and also celebrate the um, album's release. Is there a date yes. attached to it? Well, we're shooting for April. Okay. April. I still have to, nice. So I have to finish it, but we're 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 getting there. We're shooting for April. Can can we tear the internet radio waves down and do a nice album release party or something like that as a I, you know as it draws it. A, draws closer? I would absolutely <laughs> right. adore that. Yes. I'm I'm Thank I'm you. I'm counting on that. I'm counting on that. Okay. The beautiful. Already. The talented. Tony Award winning, <laughs> Grammy nominee and super everything. Melbourne Moore, I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us. 
bless you. It's been such a joy. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Take care. That's the talented Melvin Moore. More music, of course.